Hello and welcome to the ninth part of our online course on answer set solving in practice. My name is Thorsten Schaub and we are actually running this course as a master course at the University of Potsdam. Anyway, in the last part you've already seen actually uh, first algorithms, first drafts of algorithms to compute stable models, but actually Again, the, the nice thing about this, they were derived from semantic principles, but they could not really scale to the level that we are up to right now. So I, I guess if you implement them well, you may be able to deal with problems of 50 variables. If you're really good in implementation, perhaps 100 variables, but that's more or less where things then stop. But keep in mind that nowadays high performance solvers like Klingo, right? Uh, can deal with problems of tens of millions of variables, which is a completely different level. And to understand actually how we can reach this level, we actually have to step back again. We have to look at what is really going on. So we've seen propagation, we've seen a search and how, how choices are made, but how can one really, what is really going on in the propagation? What techniques does one need? What features are there? And for this, we step back and now look again at characterization at the question, question, what is a stable model? And the first thing we will do is look at an axiomatic characterization, which is more or less the most abstract you get. So you don't look at computation at all, you just look at what is the stable model again? And here the idea is, let's pin this down uh, in terms of axioms. So we, we, we ask ourselves, if we take a logic program and translate it into a formula, how does this formula have to look like so that its models, its classical models, give us all the stable models of the original program? And uh, again, this may seem to you as a, as, a, as a, well, how to say, a logical, esoteric exercise. But the interesting thing is actually the first formulas that we'll see, the completion formulas. This is the basic data structure of CLASP, the solver in Klingo. So anyway, so we will first look at, at, at these uh, uh, sections here, which may not tell you a lot. After all, it's about... Uh, translating a, a, a logic program into formulas and then we look at completion and loop formulas and these will become uh, clear in what follows. Now let me embed this again a little bit into this characterization landscape. So we've started actually with this map way beyond in the introductory section and where we actually looked at the Redux based characterization and what we will look at now is the axiomatic characterization. This is now the third bullet. And we've already then had a taste of how uh, propagation works. We will then deepen that in the next one until we come to a proof theoretic characterization. And then we're almost there. Once we have then the constraint-based characterization, we can design algorithms and uh, perhaps talk about some issues of the implementation. Anyway, that's more or less our roadmap we are on. And uh, even though, again, I take you now back to the theory, but the goal is still to understand how the implementation works and what are the techniques that are under the hood. Okay, so let's start with what is nowadays called Clark's completion due to Keith Clark who invented it at the end of the 70s.